Hello and welcome to a very special episode of Weekend Winners in association with Bet Victor as we look ahead to the 2024 Grand National as well as the best of the action on Saturday from Aintree as well. Now joining me in the studio, we've done a whole different reverse because Deck is back from his holiday, feeling suitably refreshed and ready to go. Uh, a little bit, probably one of those holidays where you need a holiday after the holiday. But uh, yeah, I went to Portugal to play some golf with my mates for uh, for a long weekend. Uh, and it was lovely to get a, a bit of sun on the back burn, back for the, the national. So, yeah, no, um, a great time of year, isn't it? I don't know, it, it feels like, are we in flat racing? Are we in jumps racing? Oh. What are we doing? But uh, in a bit of limbo, but this is a, a massive, massive weekend for the, for the industry and a, and a great shot window for getting in new fans. Yeah, that's exactly it. And like you say, it is kind of a blurred lines at the minute, but we still have <laughs> so much more to come, though, from the jump season all the same. And good that you've timed it nicely for us to come back from the golf and to grow in the studio with your presence because I've just got you in here because Sam Boswell is tuning in then from Liverpool itself, from Aintree itself then as well. So Sam, great to see you. Looking very, very smart and very sharp suited and booted there. How's Liverpool treating you? Yeah, it's uh, fantastic to be here, Kate. Great day one. We're obviously recording this as ahead of day two. Uh, the rain has finally relented and I think we're going to have a great ladies day, but I'm more interested in chatting through Saturday's card Let's hope Rixie's uh, golf, well, I heard it wasn't too clever. That's all I'm going to say. Let's hope his picks certainly make the cut. Yes, well, exactly. Well, as long as he's back finding winners for us, that's all we care about at this stage. Nicely done for stitching him and outing him there, Sam, <laughs> as well. Now, before we get into the action, a reminder as ever to please do a gamble responsibly. Our tips are not guaranteed to win, but we will still do our best to point you in the right direction all the same as we move on to our first race. Now, we begin with the 155 grade one action up first. This is the Mersey Novices hurdle for four-year-olds and over, over to mile four. Now we've got the mayor in here, brighter days ahead. She heads the vesting after a very good second at Cheltenham, but most people probably felt that was disappointing given the regard she's held in by all connections. Gordon Elliott is one of the last two renewals though, so Deck, does brighter days ahead beat the boys here? I, I, I'm hoping not, but obviously we're kicking off with a grade one, but really interesting here, brighter days ahead and Caldwell Potter are out of the same dam. Yes. The brilliant Matney who has thrown some unbelievable horses, uh, mighty Potters in there as well, Indiana Jones, I think there's a, there's a good few in there. So uh, a bit of siv sibling rivalry to <laughs> kick off the show this week, but look, I, I think Caldwell Potter should be favoured, to be honest, and I think he should be comfortable favoured on, on form. You know, I thought it'd be fair to say outside of Ballyburn, he was probably the best Irish novice hurdler before his move. Obviously swapped hands for seven and mm. 740,000 euros and is now with the, the Paul Nichols team. But, you know, before the move to, to ditch you, we know he jumps well, he travels well, handles bad ground. He's got a great attitude as well, this horse, uh, and he's a grade one winner. What I did notice about him, Kate, uh, and Sam actually, um, is he's a horse who likes to use himself and I think a good gallop will always suit him because one he can take a hold and two I just think he's got a, a long striding horse he does get plenty of pace to run at here that will be a, a big plus to him I suppose the only worry is how has he taken his mid-season move but I think uh, at the prices I'm willing to, to um, take a chance and to be honest this is a little bit of a pressure horse I think for Paul Nichols mm. because this horse should be going very close on all known form. Yeah, and Paul Nichols, he's not one to miss an opportunity and not to miss an opportunity to make a point as well. And as you said, he crossed the pretty penny. But Sam, we've got the sibling rivalry here at the head of the market, brighter days ahead and Coldwell Potter. Which side of the fence did you sit on? Our oh, Dex made a fantastic argument, Kate, and I'm 100% with him on Coldwell Potter. I'm fairly convinced looking at the betting as well. I think Coldwell Potter is going to go off clear favourite here. For all I am a big fan of Gordon Elliott's mare, Brighter Days Ahead. I just I just feel like this horse, Caldwell Potter, you know, we, we know the regard he was held in. Obviously, Connections uh, at, at Culture House tried so hard to keep him. He went for such huge money. But Paul Nichols will know that this is important, this race. And I know that the fact that he's going to be a chaser in time is what the long-term future holds. It's all for me, though, about the fact that this horse didn't go to Cheltenham. And the time he's been given to acclimatise, I think, is really key here. Cool well potter for me, and he's going to go off clear favourite. As well, then, for Sam. So that is a very yeah. interesting angle. The question is, though, Katie Tracy, are you making it a trio? 
I am. We're going to be doing this again now for the hat trick for the three of us. As Sam rejoices in the background. I don't know if, that, if it's necessary something to rejoice, but we'll take that for now anyway. But yeah, cold World Potter then for me also. Like say, the pair of you two have made the case. Take your bride today days ahead. Happy to go and let her win at that price. Even if she drifts out a bit and cold World Potter comes in for the market support here. That I'm just, if I was taking her on versus the mayors last time at Cheltenham with Dysa Enos, who of course didn't run, then I'm going to be more than happy to take her on against the boys mm. this time around. And like you said, Deck, I think Paul Nichols is wanting to make a point here. And he is coming here as a fresher horse, 108 days off of the track then as yeah. well for him. Costs that pretty penny of a price tag. So yeah, it will be pretty significant what he's going to be able to show here. And you said about the pedigree, the step up and trip hopefully won't inconvenience him yeah. whatsoever. And he may even find more from no, him. No, absolutely. He's a full brother to Mighty Potter, isn't yeah. he? Who is best over, over two and a half. So yeah, looking forward to this so we're kicking off these this week's show with that uh, all on the same horse oh my goodness me. okay i can just feel the sweat beads <laughs> starting to rise and so we're all on the coldwell potter bandwagon here but let us know who you fancy then in the comments section below now before we move on to our next race a reminder to like and subscribe to the at the races youtube channel and also hit the bell notification so you never miss an episode as we move on to the 2:30 at Aintree on Saturday now. And this is a premier handicap chase for five-year-olds and over, over three mile one at 2.30. A really competitive betting heat to boot headed by Krabili at four to one. But Sam, who wins it? Yeah, I thought this was an absolutely horrible race to try and find the winner <laughs> of, a proper challenge. Uh, so thanks, Mr. Producer, for putting this one into the running <laughs> order. Uh, I, there was a few that made the shortlist, but... Uh, Krabili, for me, I just don't want to take four to one about a horse that I don't think is the strongest jumper in the world. Um, I don't think he's appalling, but I think he's got the odd error in him. I thought it was curious that Anthony Honeyball's got three in the race. He's won it previously. Uh, but maybe if he's got three runners, has he got one that he's really certain on? Um, by the time I went through them all, the horse I plumped for is the outsider. He's not even on the odd graphic there. He's around a 25 to one shot. Uh, now, when or where... Uh, easy for me to say. Uh, this horse for the Crawfords is really interesting. I went back through some old comments. When he won at Down Royal, they had him earmarked potentially as a Grand National runner for the future. Obviously, he's not ended up there. Not yet, anyway. I don't think he's going to improve enough as a nine-year-old to go anywhere near the National at this point. But go back through the form book. There's a really interesting line where he was third to Kenboy. Vanilla was in second. Now, that's the sort of best piece of form he's really got. Suggests that I think he could have been a better horse than he's ended up. But off this mark of 1-3-2, I think he's quite an interesting player. Outside of the field, it's a bit of an each-way dart, I appreciate. But I wanted to try and have something at a price in what is a very confusing race. Very confusing race. I think that's very <laughs> fair to say as well. And uh, the outsider of the field, then now where or when for Sam? I mean, Deck, we're not exactly going to be beating that unless you're agreeing with him but uh no i'm not no i'm not going to be as brave as uh, as sam here i was torn between two in the race uh the king of roy hope and uh forward plan and i just came down on forward plan because i think he's a stronger stayer he's got form late into the spring and um and i just think staying could be be key in this race obviously the ground is is pretty soft up there but i hope it will dry for this lad because i think the the drier it, the more dries, the better his chance. But he's had a great season so far at forward plan. I think he's had four starts. He did need his comeback run um, in the Badger Beers, but then he went on to win at Donny. He was really unlucky then in the great Yorkshire chase um, uh, when he got just too far behind in a race. Very few horses made up ground. He then got caught in traffic on the home turn as well, and he absolutely flew home to nearly run down annual Invictus. Then last time out, he went and, and won at Kempton, and like, he looked in some order. The way he travelled and the way he hit the line, he just looked like he could go in again. Um, now, he made things very hard for himself at Kempton because he did a couple of sloppy jumps down the side and he put himself on, on the back foot and he was outpaced, I think, on the way to three out and two out. But the further he went, the better he looked. And I'm hoping like, he's, he's a really strong stare. Uh, he comes here fresh. I was actually interested in him in the, in the Kim Muir, but mm -hmm. he, he's coming here instead. Uh, I think he's got a big chance. I would just say... Um, I think it's a 49-day break he has, has to overcome and the Anthony Honey ball yard aren't uh, um, firing in the winners. I wouldn't say the horse are running badly, but it's just something I know. But I think if he's in good order again, he's got a big chance. I would like the ground to dry, but he's got that long entry straight to mow him down later. I think if he does win, it'll be an exciting win.
Yeah, and every bit of salmon, like say, eked out in that. Yeah, not from nine Antony Hannibal in the last two weeks, as mm. we record on Friday morning here. He so. did have a horse, given the price run okay in the mare's bumper yesterday, and he had a faller three out, I think, at Taunton, and who seemed to be going okay. So that's kind of the most kind of up to date evidence we have. Yeah, so hopefully, like I say, they're running well enough, and this will be the one then just to change that strike rate. Uh, so we all agreed in the first race, which was lovely for the three of us to be able to do. Now we're all totally disagreeing in this one because three different selections here but it is that type of a race isn't it now initially I thought I'm just going to land on Cribbilly here I hugely respect this horse in here but at the prices though Twig is the one that interests me most now mm. he's a horse where time and time again he has not flattered to deceive I feel that would be sort of damning him a bit too much then with that but he probably hasn't found as much as necessarily looked likely in the past twig but he's such a consistent type mm. if you can get the each way price then about him in this which he currently is priced up with then I feel that that's the way to go with this for the Ben Pooling Yard who continue to fire in the winners on the track at the at present but um yeah he's ground versal he proved that last time out he's 28 to 1 he ran a screamer in the ultima to finish second behind chianti classico there now that was the same position that happy go lucky filled in the ultima before going on to win this in 2021 now i think that a better surface we're waiting to see what the ground's going to have changed to then today yeah. so i'm our weatherman is the is the one to report then on that. But hopefully, if it continues to dry up then today, then uh, that should see him in a better effect. And he can put, obviously, or continue to put that slightly lesser run in the Coral Gold Cup to rest now. So, has to take the four-pound rise on the chin off a career-high mark, but this isn't the classiest renewal. So, I thought that uh, class would hopefully out then with Twig. And this is a Twig for me. Deck, you're with? I'm with Forward Plan. And Sam, I'm going to speak on his behalf because he is with now, where or when then in this one. But Sam, actually, just as we've got you, ground-wise though, how has the weather been up in Liverpool? Yeah, uh, as we record Friday morning, the last rain we had was kind of at the end of racing Thursday evening. It, it didn't persist too late into the evening as far as I could tell. Uh, I went to the Liverpool game. It, it was significant, <laughs> but... Like I say, I think now looking at it, I, I'm working on soft ground on, on Saturday. That's what I've got in with. So I really wouldn't be too alarmed if your horse doesn't want it heavy. I, I think it will dry out. I just hope it doesn't end up too tacky for him. We weren't going to mention the Liverpool game, Sam, but thank you very much <laughs> for that all the same. Swiftly moving on now to the 3.05 at Aintree. Now, this is the Liverpool hurdle, a grade one contest, of course, for four-year-olds and over, over three miles and a half, a furlong. Now, this is the race before the big one itself, and what a race we have teed up for this. An absolute bunch of characters now <laughs> joined by some top-level chasers. Monkfish and Hewick are joining the party as well. Of course, reigning champion of the last two renewals of this race side of Burley, looking to win it for the third successive year at the age of 12. So, Deck, this race is just mad. What on earth are we doing well, with it? Well, it really is. It's a mad division, isn't it? It's, uh, it hasn't been um, the classiest division in, in recent years. I think Tia Hoopu did stamp his class and his authority on the division um, in the stairs hurdle. Uh, but Flooring Porter doesn't have mm. to deal with him. Um, he also doesn't have to deal with Irish Point, who was in there at the confirmation stage as well. And look, it just goes to show you how disappointing this division is. A 12-year-old sire de Burley is 6-1 to one here, you know. But look, it don't, won't matter a jot if this guy goes in and wins. Look, he's, he, he's, he's a bit of a character himself, Florian Porter, but I think he's actually, with, a, with, with age, he's grown up and he's gotten a little bit straightforward. Does like to go a little bit left, jump a little bit left, and definitely hangs left late. But um, look, he comes here off the back of another big run in, in the stairs hurdle. Uh, it feels like he's been around forever. He's still only a nine-year-old. He's certainly younger than uh, Sire de Burley. And look, he just ran, he ran a big race again um, in the stairs hurdle. Now, you definitely could say in parts he had run of the race because I think it was a pretty tactical um, stairs hurdle this year and he was on the front end but like I say he hasn't got Tia Hoopu to deal with I would love the ground to dry out even more for him I've always felt he does everything that little bit better um, on drier ground it'll also drier ground would probably make things a little bit tougher for Sire de Burley with those older legs Botox has loves the mud uh, Hidden v Valley Lake is another horse who likes the mud as well so if it dries I think his chance is only going to enhance as well so yeah 
keeping this race simple with Floor and Porter. A very unsimple race that you are attempting then to simplify yeah. as well. I mean, I'm, I'm going to join you with this one. I'm not entirely sure even what the pace is going to do of this race because mm. if he can get to the front and get that uncontested lead and then if he turns it into a dawdle, that's going to suit him, not yeah. Sire de Burley then. Maybe but... the other one would be Hewick potentially to yeah. go forward, reverting to hurdles. Yeah, who knows what Hewick's going to do back over <laughs> hurdles. We have know a fair few of these have gone forward in the past. I think is it um, the Gary Moore horse might just go forward I, as well he probably will go forward but he's a kind of he's a behind the bridle type horse i don't think mm. he's got the natural toe to put pace into a race no i think hopefully. whatever to be fair i think whatever way the race sets up in terms of pace he can go and make his own pace or he can take a lead off um, of a horse at a good gallop i think it sets up well for him tactically yeah that's it and the only other one was dasher drasher of course i was thinking of he might yeah. just go forwards but like i say if he's no one's going to go up his inside you wouldn't have thought for flooring pools you'd be because silly you'd get too taken, yeah you'd be very silly too you get taken out so at least that slight um quirk that he has might play to his advantage by putting off his rivals yeah. then to try and take him on on that inside so, yeah, I'm with Florian Porter as well here. Rather than going around the houses and just picking a selection for the sake of it at a bigger price in here, why not just play the horse? Just keep, thing, just keep things simple. Yeah. <laughs> just keep it simple. <laughs> we keep going to say, keep it simple for a not simple horse in a not simple race, Sam. But, uh, yeah, we're, we're trying to keep it as straightforward is, sim as is simple Sam going to join the party? That's the one. <laughs> Our simple duo, Sam, are you joining us? <laughs> Absolutely not. You described this race as a bunch of characters, Kate. I think that's quite uh, quite generous. But <laughs> Thank you. the theme of my selection is going to be forgiveness. And I think <laughs> Crambo needs to be forgiven for what happened at Cheltenham. You go back through his record. I don't think you can do anything. Just have to put a line through that run. Um, I think his entry record would suggest to me as well, having finished seventh when hampered uh, going back to, to the year before, Last, I, I, I do think he's then come here and won in good to, on good to soft ground. Um, he's run reasonably well on heavy ground, having won on it at sand. And if he win on sand and heavy, he can win on soft ground at Aintree, no bother. Um, I really, really just think Crambo just needs to be forgiven. He's a price as well at around seven to one that I think is mm. pretty fair for the one bad run that, that nothing came to light. Fergal O'Brien's team seemed to be ticking over okay. Um, had some really respectable runs recently and a couple of winners. I just felt that the price is Crambo. He's only seven, isn't he? I think he's got less quirks than some of them in here. And he kind of just ticked enough boxes that I have to take a leap of faith. For all I respect, Flooring Porter, I'd say he was probably the other one that was on the shortlist. Side of Burley, I think the roof would come off if he can go and win again in this race. What a horse he's been at 12. But I think as you've alluded to there, Deck, he probably shouldn't be winning this at 12. It probably shows the state of the division. Hewick's an interesting contender, but for me, let's forgive Crambo for last time out. I'm staying with Fergal O'Brien, 7 12. OK, then forgiveness is the theme of <laughs> Sam Boswell. Simpleness is the theme then for us in this Absolutely. race in the Liverpool hurdle. But again, a little bit of uh, disagreement in the Liverpool hurdle. But again, do let us know in the comments section your own selections for the race as we move on to the big one itself now, the 2024 Grand National. Of course, a premier handicap chase for seven-year-olds and over, over four mile two at four o'clock. Now, of course, a reduced field this year, 34 runners, no reserves. Last year's winner, Korak Ramblet, heads the betting in a bid to retain his crown at 13 to do. He's fending off the Irish challenges in the betting, at least. But, Sam, you get first go at the 2024 Grand National. Better find the first winner of it, hadn't I, that's been a mare for a long time. <laughs> Limerick Lace, for me, is going to be the selection for Gavin Cromwell. Uh, Gavin's you know, just continuing to go from strength to strength, seems to be able to train anything uh, to win any kind of race, whether it's at Royal Ascot or the Cheltenham Festival. For me, I think this horse is an incredibly interesting contender. Only seen at the three-mile trip just sort of the once and finished second to Coco Beach. So the trip is an unknown. There's enough on the page to suggest to me that she'll be OK at the trip. And you do need a horse with gears for the Grand National. We've seen that before. She's proven over the shorter trip she's very effective. She doesn't mind if it ends up staying towards that soft, heavy ground. She's one on good to soft at Doncaster, so there's plenty of versatility there. I'm a really big fan. I've been very pleased to hear positive reports coming from the stable. The money has arrived. I saw JP McManus mention that he's had a, a small little wager on her anti-post. Um, I definitely think she is going to be in the shake-up, and she's going to be my sort of number one pick, if you like, for my Grand National squad. 
when we go through them. Okay, well, to be fair now, we should probably go through those now. So you say she <laughs> is the leading selection then of that, but you've just said about your squad there. So I'm going to give you the first four to go out, Sam. Easy question. Who are your remaining three? Right, let's start through. So Limerick Lace is going to be my winner. Next in, I think Korak Ramble is going to go down on his sword and have a very valiant sort of second if you like, in terms of trying to defend his crown. I, I do really like him, and I think the price is about right now on him. Uh, going through the field elsewhere, if it dries out, I can see chemical energy running into a place for Gordon Elliott. I know the record the horse has suggests that maybe he would want the much better ground, but I, I, listen, I think he's done enough. He second at Cheltenham in the four-miler on soft ground suggests to me that I think he'll be absolutely fine. I think he's quite an interesting contender off a mark of 184. And then my fourth that will sneak into the place, this is my sort of big prize play each way. Uh, Roy Marsh, who was seventh in the race last year, um, seems to jump these kind of fences for absolute fun. A decent prep run last time out. And, and again, we'll handle the softer ground. And I like horses that have proven, been there, done it in the national and we'll get round, which is the key thing you need from that kind of big each way price. So that's my one, two, three, four. Looking forward to hearing your guys. Let's see if potentially one of us at least can get the tri cast up. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine? I mean, you'll never see one of us again. Then if one of us manages to do that deck, then yeah, it was nice knowing the pair of you. Well, yeah, I suspect it won't be me because my record in the national is an absolute shambles. What a way to tee this up. Yeah, no, you, you've <laughs> got to be honest. You've got to be honest. I think people go on about the moderation to the, the national. We should mention, obviously, it's a smaller field this year. There's going to be a standing start, but I can't even get horses to complete in the national. <laughs> never mind run first or second. So that's where I am lately. Uh, I backed Galvin last year. I think he went at the first. And I also backed Delta Work, who, who came down. But I'm changing it up this year. Uh, I'm going to go number one this year for me is going to be Mr. Incredible. I thought he was running a big race in it last year. He was the type of horse going into the race where you just, you know, you could see him really loving it or really hating it. And I thought he actually enjoyed himself. But he came down at the canal turn, I think, on the second time. And basically, because his tack slipped, he was really unlucky. Um, watching the race and, and seeing him go, I thought that looked a very unseat. But given the tack slipped, uh, it was, that was very harsh on, on Brian Hayes. But I'd love to see Brian ride a big winner because he's been quite unlucky with his association with the Emma Mullins yard. You know, and Paul Byrne, a lot of those ho horses have been sold on to other owners, meaning Brian hasn't got a, a chance to ride them. He's keeping the ride on this guy. And look, he comes here on the back of that run in the Midlands Grand National. Um, he's got a touch of class. Uh, we know he's going to stay the trip and he handles bad ground. So I'm Hoping the new starting procedure doesn't put him off and he jumps off. Uh, if he does, I, I think he's a player. Uh, and who are the two, three and four I hear yes. you ask, Kate and Tracy? <laughs> oh, yeah. So people can rule them out at home. Um, ju just on connections and price alone, Gallia de la Tour, I think, is of, of interest to me. She's very unexposed over these kind of staying trips. The one time she's had a go was in the classic chase when she was second um, to my silver lining, trying to give her a bit of weight. Um, she can be quite hit and miss, but I'm hoping that's because it, it, it's been by design, basically. Um, this, you know, as we all know, the Skelton Yard are great target trainers, or Dan is a great target trainer. So I'm hoping this has been the long-term plan. Number three for me this year is going to be Vanillier. Um, like, just how he stayed on so strongly last year. Now, he wouldn't be the... The, the slickest of jumpers. He does have his own style. He's maybe a little bit slow through the air. But if Sean Flanagan could just sit a little bit closer to the pace this year, you know, the way he stayed on was really eye-catching. And if it happens, the ground manages to stay brutal on the national course. Uh, Noble Yates just looks like a horse who'd stay 10 miles. Yeah. So I know he's got top weight, but he's a horse with a touch of class. Um, I think he come, the key for me this year with his run this year is he comes here off a kinder prep. He had a hard race in the Grand National last year, but he comes year off the run in the stairs hurdle which was a really tactical race uh, an extra week to get over as well I think he'll be a, a fresher horse he never makes things easy for his jockeys because he races behind the bridle he's quite lazy but if Harry Copton can maybe again like Vanillier just get him into a mid div kind of spot and just be a little bit closer to the pace I think he could run well but who knows with this race it's absolutely bonkers it is but at least you've gone with the horse that is definitely proven around there the winner yeah of the but watch ago. watch them on seat now watch them on seat that's just what <laughs> usually happens 
time. Yeah. Fourth in it last year. Like I said, I think people forget how well he actually did run mm. in it then last year. Big time. Um, so, yeah, again, still, he, as an only a nine-year-old now to be bang there again, he's a big price, isn't he, Novo Yates over. Good cases made all round there. Now, gracias. I might be struggling to make that much of a, a strong case then for my main selection because you know me, you know the way I like to run the trends. <laughs> it's actually helped me out for the each way play in this race over the last few years. So I'm hoping it's going to find an each way price then again for Glenn Gooley in here, Ooh. who's about a 66 to one shot. I wonder if we could get even bigger than on the day for him because, of course, people look back to his most recent effort and say, well, he's prepped over two and a half miles at the Cheltenham Festival. How is he going to prove his stamina here? And the stamina is still a question to a large degree for him. But we've seen in recent renewals of the Grand National horses prepping over two and a half miles going into it as well. So I don't think that's any sort of a negative, really. Hopefully it will just freshen him up that little bit as well. And when you go back to his previous run then in the Thiestes chase, when he finished second on that penultimate start, the question going into it was, well, Glenn Gooley, is he going to say this? I thought he answered any sort of doubts over Samna over that trip at Goran anyway, because all he was doing was fighting back in the home straight there. And you look at his Sairis by Coastal Path, he's produced the likes of Assyrian Falange, Franco de Port, Bacardis, all then trained by Willie Mullins, who all turned into one of some of his best stayers in their respective eras then. Yeah, I'm hoping then, as I say, he's ticking the most boxes at this stage for me. Big ride for Michael O'Sullivan. Now, in terms of my next um, best bets then for, or for my second, third, fourth, they're probably a little bit more obvious cases to make. Kitty's light. What an incredible story this will be for the wonderful Christian Williams family then um, then for this horse where he's got his own way of jumping about it. He tends to go through the top of his fences, but we saw with Tiger Roll, this is a very different beast this race nowadays compared to what it was um, going back 10 years or so. Yeah. So you can get away with it that bit more so. So Jack Chu is going to have to sit tight, but <laughs> we know he'll stay and this looks like the race he's clearly being teed up for then. Panda Boy in next. I spoke about him on a previous show on here. Now again, this has been a name for him. I would have liked to have seen him since his last run in the DRF over hurdles bypass Cheltenham though and he's looked a live national type since his fifth in the Irish Grand National last year. Chemical Energy, who Sam mentioned, is going to be my next in then, considering Beck to... You are swinging for the fences here. I, I am, like exactly. It. That's it for trends. I just follow them. I take sentiment and my own rationale out of it, which is probably a positive. And Chemical Energy came out on top of a lot of those as well. Like I say, I hope that soft conditions don't inconvenience him and it's more a time of year thing for him into the spring, into the autumn. And that's where we tend to see him coming good. And I'm just going to give a broody bonus for the crackers, Gallia Delato, to finish fifth then for me as uh, well. She's on a going day. You're joining Sam and you're half joining me. Yeah, exactly. I've got a little bit of crossover there <laughs> with one of your selections on each for me as well. Yeah, Gallia Delato. When she's on song, she's dynamite mm. over her fences. So she'll be my fifth one home. But uh, yeah, they are our top four slash five for me then in the Grand National itself. But who do you fancy for the Grand National? Let us know in the comments section below as we're going to move over to the Skypad to give you our best bets for the weekend. Right now, it is a big weekend, so some big best bets for you as well. And again, as ever, we will be boosting some of these selections, so make sure you head to the website to utilize those as well. So, Deck, you're up first with your nap next best and long shot, and we're boosting your nap, I believe. We are. I'm hoping we'll be a flooring porter after flooring porter. That would be nice. Uh, look, I think he'll go really well in, in the Liverpool hurdle. Uh, he's got no Tia Hoopu or Irish Point or any of those horses to deal with here. Tactically, I think the race sets up very nicely for him. I hope the ground dries. I think the more it dries, the better uh, his chance. I think he just does everything a little bit easier and a little inconvenient some of his rivals as well. Uh, drying ground again would always be uh, would also be a help for forward plan. He's just looked like a horse in great order this season. Really progressive. Uh, he's a strong stayer over this trip. So if he wins, I think it'll be an exciting win. I'm just hoping his jumping will uh, will hold up and he can stay in touch there before they swing into the straight. And then. And the long shot's going to be Mr. Incredible for me in the Grand National, running a big race in the in the in the contest last year before the saddle slipped at the Canal Turn. Looked like he was enjoying himself, and he comes here on the back of a good run in the Midlands Grand National.
So, oh. yeah, up the Mr. Incredible. He's actually one horse who you could see, given his name, could plummet in price. So we'll see what the crack is there. I know. That's the only other thing. You've got to factor in with the Grand National, isn't it? Yeah. Is that which horse is going to come in for support because of their name? Exactly. And he is definitely, unfortunately, if you're a backer of his, one of those that will probably plummet yeah. in price as well. Make but... sure they get on early because Sammy Boswell loves cutting those prices. If you fancy one in the Grand National, get on early. <laughs> Make sure to do exactly that. But flooring Porter, though, the nap then for Deck, who will be boosted on the website. Sam, where are we going for your best bets? Yeah, I don't think Mr. Incredible was named after Mr. Ricks, but there we go. <laughs> right, we'll move on to my nap. More importantly, Kate, you've always had great taste, and I believe you quite like Bound at 50. I can see why. The form obviously took a massive boost earlier in the week, uh, second to Gaelic Warrior uh, at Cheltenham, but I really think he's uh, cut above the rest in this field. Come five o'clock. Obviously, we've had a bit of a different shape to when the races are being run because of the move of the national. But uh, he's, you know, top rated in the field. Gordon Elliott's already had a winner this week. Jack Kennedy, I think, is riding the best he's ever ridden. There is so much to like about him. Uh, Caldwell Potter, we've already spoken about his chances. The three of us are in agreement. Um, I can understand. I think he's going to go shorter than that current price on screen. He'll be clear favourite. And I think he's going to really lay down a marker for Paul Nichols for next season. I think he's a very exciting horse. Looking forward to seeing him. And my long shot, I've already touched on him a little bit. I don't, I'm not too worried about the ground. The more I look at it, the more I think that second in the four miler on soft ground suggests to me that Chemical Energy can go very well in the Atri Grand National. A big best of luck to everyone who's having a flutter this weekend. Please do so responsibly. And like I say, all our boosts are going to be on site. Uh, you'll be able to see them for the naps. Kate, I think you've copied my nap, so we'll boost your next best. Sam's being very kind to us because uh, Bet Victor are kindly boosting my next best bet then because, as I say, that founder 50 is already being boosted, not to give anything away, but he is also my nap then here. So Sam and I in a lot of agreement come at the 5 o'clock, the grade one, Maghull novices chase over the two miles. I really think this is his race to lose now. He's priced up accordingly, but I still think that 11 to 5 there remains a feasible price for him. Given the at the start of his chasing campaign I was one of those that cribbed it to a certain extent when we were previewing his chances at the DRF where he actually ran a cracker to finish second behind Illitatomp and running even better reversing that form at Cheltenham for all that Illitatomp probably isn't a Cheltenham horse but that form was given a significant boost at Aintree earlier on this week so hopefully it'll be that bit sharper than the reappearing Hercule de Soy. Now, my next best bet, then, that we are now boosting, and he's a big price anyway, is Johnson's Blue in the 120, a premier handicap hurdle over three miles. Now, this is a really intriguing opener, but this was a cracking strike rate. Eight from 15 now wins two starts ratio. And, of course, he did have that bit of a non-event on his chase savior on his sort of reappearance, but last time out, proper reappearance, Back over hurdles at Doncaster. Perhaps fortunate to win. He was left in the lead two out when he was one length down, but he wasn't exactly done with at that point. I like horse that's had one start already this season and a horse that won that sole start. He has done exactly that and uh, hopefully won't be ridden too far forwards and get into a pace battle here because I hope he has that little bit more restraint this time around. And my long shot, the aforementioned Glenn Gooley, 50 to one shot then in the Grand National. Right, but that is everything from us on this very special episode. So a big thank you to Deck and to Sam for all of their hard work as per usual. Deck, best of luck. Sam, continue to enjoy the Scouse hospitality. I'll see you up there then tomorrow as well. But more importantly, best of luck to you at home with your best bets then, notably, of course, in the Grand National itself. And we'll be back at the same time next week to preview the best of the action from Newbury and Air.